<laughs> hey, I'm Shane, and today I'm going to be talking about currently my favorite lens for my Sony cameras, and that is the 85mm f1.8. In this video, I'm going to talk about why it's such a great value to buy for your Sony cameras. So, this is the 85mm f1.8. It's a medium telephoto prime lens, meaning it can't zoom for the Sony full frame e-mount cameras. I got it about a year ago or more now um, when I first got my Sony a7R 3 and it's honestly been on my camera almost half the time since I bought my camera, even though I've got other lenses that cover this focal range as well. The 85mm focal length is not very versatile and it really requires you to be a certain distance away from your subject in order to have them fill the frame. This makes it great for portrait work where you only need to capture the top part of your subject or if you're doing landscape work where you're far away from your subject or other things such as that. The biggest thing is this lens is not very useful indoors because you have to be very far away from the subject you're shooting making it not the best lens to have in your camera if you're trying to do more running gun style things. But it's really good at one thing, and that is isolating the subject. With the aperture of f1.8, this lens can render the background to be almost a blurry mess, which is absolutely marvelous if that's the look you're going for. And honestly, I love the images I get out of this lens. For video work, this lens is also incredible. It's auto-focusing, making it awesome on the Sony cameras, but it also has that awesome shallow depth of field, which allows for some really cool B-roll, or if you're indoors, it gives you a lot of range because you can do almost wide open at f1.8 indoors and get very well-lit situations because of that. In the rest of this video though, I'm going to do a comprehensive review of the lens, talk about what I like about it, the few drawbacks I do have to it, and also how it compares to the other options on the market currently. Starting off though with the build quality, this lens is built very well. It's a combination of both metal and plastic, but mainly plastic on the exterior. It has no weather sealing, which is unfortunate. However, it does boast to be weather resistant. I'm very skeptical of this weather resistance though, as it lacks a rubber gasket and overall, the build doesn't convince me that it is weather sealed in any sort of way. I've never taken it out in more than a light drizzle. My favorite part about this lens though it's, is that it is incredibly lightweight. It comes in at only 332 grams, which makes it super awesome on Sony mirrorless cameras that are very weight, lightweight themselves. This is awesome compared to even other camera manufacturers and no one really makes an 85 f1.8 at this size. The lens also comes with a couple features that aren't typical to the Sony mid-tier camera lenses. It has a focus hold button that you can program to anything you want on the side of it, as well as a manual and autofocus toggle switch. The autofocus button I find is very useful and I have it programmed to eye autofocus, which makes it a lot of fun when you're doing portrait shoots because you can just focus with your hand that's on the lens. The next topic is sharpness, and really there's not much to say about this lens. It's insanely sharp. If you look on DxOMark, this is actually one of the highest ranked lenses ever on the website, and it's not an expensive lens. It's insanely sharp, wide open at f1.8, even though it does suffer from some dullness in the edges, at f4, the lens is impeccable, and if you're using this lens with a flash, it can max out the resolution on the Sony a7R 3 easily, and it's very impressive. Being that this lens is an 85mm lens, its minimum focusing distance is 80 centimeters, which is quite far away from the lens. This makes this lens quite difficult for product photography. Um, and anytime you're doing indoor work, as I said earlier, because you have to be quite far away from your subject to put them in the frame. This lens is really tailored for portrait photography. And with the aperture of f1.8, the bokeh is absolutely wonderful. It can render the background almost completely into a blur. And there is some radial cat's eye to the bokeh effect that you get making it have a somewhat swirly effect in a way, which is not uncommon for 85 millimeter lenses. 
However, it's very prominent on this lens and you kind of have to live with it and I don't mind it at all. The autofocus performance with this lens is absolutely marvelous. I've never run into any real issues with it and I've taken thousands upon thousands of photos and hours of video footage with it and I've never been limited by the camera lens. The camera is a real limiting factor when using this lens, which is the way it should be when you're using it. My biggest gripe with this lens, besides the lack of weather ceiling, is its poor manual focus performance. And the reason I say this is because, as is usual for Sony lenses, it's a focus by wire system, meaning it's fully electronic and has no mechanical tether between the focusing and turning of the wheel on the outside. So, with that said, that's fine. I'm used to it. All Sony lenses are that way. However, the focus ring physically has very little resistance on this lens, making it easy to accidentally turn it just too far or not quite enough, which makes it a little frustrating while using it in manual focus. This is mainly a personal preference. However, it is notable and I just don't love it. It's not bad, but it's not the best. I'll now move on to the value of this lens, and that is because it's so darn cheap. It comes in at 600 US dollars or 800 Canadian, and I know that's not a small amount of money, but overall considering the extreme quality of this lens and the other options on the market, this lens is an insanely good value. I'll compare it to the other options so you know what I mean. I'm only going to be comparing it to autofocusing lenses. Starting off with the most apples to apples comparison is the Zeiss Vadis 85mm f1.8. This lens comes in at double the price at $1,200. That's quite a lot of money, and for what you get more, it isn't that much. The Vadis comes with a more rugged body that's completely weather sealed, and in my experience, the baddest lenses are incredibly good in terms of the build quality with a rubber sealing gasket and an all metal body, as well as a very nice focusing ring. But you're also paying for the Zeiss coating on the glass, which theoretically gives you better contrast in situations where there's more backlighting or a lot more flaring that would show up in the image. This isn't necessarily something that's worth double the price though, and in my opinion, I think the Zeiss Vadis isn't a good option anymore since this lens came out. If you have money to burn though, and you want a 85 millimeter lens, there's this lens's big brother, and that is the G Master F1.4. The 85 G Master is an absolutely great lens in terms of performance, but it comes in at three times the price at $1,800. That's a lot of money, and it's a quite a heavy lens at coming in over 800 grams. So for over double the weight, you get an f1.4, which is insanely good if you want more subject isolation. However, in my opinion, f1.4 and f1.8 at 85 millimeters doesn't add too much to the image. The background will be blurrier, and you have better low light performance, but currently in my setup, I'm not at a point where I want that extra performance. So depending on what your needs are, the G Master is a great option. However, I don't think it's worth three times the price. The last option to compare it to is the Sigma Art 85 millimeter F1.4. So again, this is an F1.4 lens giving it better low light opportunities and a more shallow depth of field. But you're paying again, two times the price at 1200 US dollars. But this lens routinely goes on sale for a thousand dollars, which is a much better way to compare these two lenses. And I find that whenever I'm reviewing a Sony lens, these Sigma art lenses always come up and it's a recurring theme in my video about how great their image quality is. But as usual, my biggest gripe with the lens is the weight and weight displacement of the lens. When I tried this lens on my camera, I was very frustrated because it's over a kilogram in weight, which is very, very heavy. And it's actually physically displaced farther out from the camera. So there's an adapter on the back of the lens because they didn't change the design for Sony lenses. 
making the weight much farther away from the camera, making it ergonomically very difficult to hold. And if I'm going to be using it for a full day, I would prefer having a better balanced lens on my camera. But that's a personal preference. If you want sheer performance to dollar value, the Sigma may be the best option for you. So in conclusion to this video, I think the Sony 85 millimeter F 1.8 is almost a must have for any Sony shooter. It fits well in almost any kit. And if you already have the 55 millimeter or the 28 millimeter prime for Sony, this lens really fills out your kit quite nicely. It's what I used for a long time and I still find myself using this lens, even though I have the 70 to 200 F 2.8. This lens is just such a great size and the image quality makes no sacrifices. Thanks for watching this video though. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you noticed that I missed something about the lens or you have a question about the lens, please just let me know below. I've used this lens, as I said, a ton and it's probably the lens I have the most experience with. So I'd be happy to talk to you about it. If you enjoyed the video though, or want to see more by me, you can check a couple of the videos that I have suggested here, or maybe please consider subscribing and liking this video. And even if you enjoyed the video, you can just drop a comment below to let me know that you're here. Anyways, I hope you have an awesome day and have a great time shooting. See ya.